Welcome back to my channel, JP here. In this video, we're listing the top 10 UK earning Christmas tunes and what the artists get each year financially from them. I don't have access to the information for other regions, but if you're from outside the UK, I'm sure you'll know many of these tunes and hopefully still find the video interesting. If not, you'll probably tune out now. So let's do this, let's crack on as I know you don't like me waffling on. Number 10 in the Christmas tune earnings chart is Stay Another Day by E17. Serious people, why are you listening to this at Christmas? Anyway, it earns E17 97,000 pounds or 130 US dollars each year. Number nine, we have Mistletoe and Wine by Cliff Richard. A very festive tune indeed. And that nests Cliff a cool 100 grand every year. Yes, 100,000 pound or 134,000 US dollars. No wonder he lives half the year in the Bahamas on the back of all his other back catalog royalties as well. 2,000 Miles by The Pretenders, a tune that people don't remember until you play it, is how I describe that tune. That said, I do like it. It's Christmas and it nets a whopping £102,000 or $136,000 each year for the band's rights holders. Number seven, a real Christmas tune by Jonah Louie, which is Stop the Cavalry. I'll admit it's a personal favourite of mine, and when Jonah is not in the kitchen at parties, he's counting £120,000 or US dollars per annum he gets from that one. Incidentally, when Stop the Cavalry was released in 1980, it made number three in the UK charts and was never intended as a Christmas song. But, in fact, Jonah says he wrote it as a protest song. Number six is Paul McCartney with Wonderful Christmas Time. We see a big jump in annual earnings with this tune and Paul getting £260,000 or US dollars each year from it. Now, on to our top five. Number five is Wham! with their absolute Christmas classic, Christmas. This tune earns £300,000 or US dollars per annum. When the tune was released initially, it was a double A side. Do you know what the other tune was on that seven inch vinyl that made up the double A side release? I've forgotten. Anyway, I suppose I'll have to look it up. Number four is a real old traditional Christmas tune, probably one of the world's most favorite Christmas tunes of all time. Yes, Bing Crosby with White Christmas. This tune brings in the royalty holders, 328,000 pounds or 439, thousand US dollars per annum for the UK rights alone. I wonder who does get that money each year. Number three, I did think this tune was going to be top two at least, to be honest, but with annual rights payments of 400,000 pounds or 536,000 US dollars in the UK alone, I'm sure Mariah Carey won't mind being in third place with the tune. All I want for Christmas is you. Incidentally, this tune reached number two in the UK charts in 1994. Top two now, and an undoubtedly all time favorite for many, Fairy Tale of New York by Kirsty McCall and the Pogues. This tune brings in 400,000 pounds or 536,000 US dollars in UK royalty rights each year. The funny thing is that McCall was not apparently first choice for the tune and was recorded in the height of the summer. Luckily for all, it was Kirsty's version that was released. That brings us to our final tune, the one that makes the most money every year. And for the two band members that share the credits to this tune between them, they get over a million pound each year. Yeah, that's 1.34 million US dollars. The tune was Christmas number one in 1973. Back in the UK charts eight times in the 1980s, twice in the 1990s, and every single year since 2006, including this year, Christmas 2021. Our number one top earner every year is Slade with Merry Christmas, everyone. The most surprising absentee for me is the tune Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid. That was a charity record and it was would be good to know if the charity was still benefiting still from the royalty payments. I would have thought that Do They Know It's Christmas would have been at least top 10, especially above Stay. I'll tell you another one that's missing from the list. Frank Goes to Hollywood with The Power of Love. Maybe that's another video I should do, the ones that are missing. Anyway, are there any you've thought of that are missing that you're surprised is not on here? 
I would like to thank Joe Summerlad from Independent as an article they published that gave me the idea for this video. And in fact, they have a whole lot more interesting facts in that article. I'll put a link to it in the description so that if you wish, you can pop over there and have a look. Also, I'll list all the tunes that are in the top 10, the links to those on YouTube. Additionally, I'd like to thank Alexa for providing the US dollar conversions. A big thank you for all taking the time to watch this video. It's really appreciated. An extra thank you to everyone who has subscribed. You know who you are. Don't forget to press that like button now if you've not done so already. Share to your social media of choice. And if you've not subscribed to us then yet on this channel, then please do so. And don't forget to turn on that bell so you get notified next time one of my videos goes live. Thanks again. Until next time, JP out. Thank you.